What is going on everyone? Today, we're gonna to be doing a special episode where we're installing these brand new coils into the front of my Ranger Raptor. Well, this is usually where an intro would play, but I don't have the budget or talent for an intro, so um, let's just get to it. So today, I'm gonna to be doing the front coils, as I said earlier. But a lot of people have been asking me lately on Facebook and on YouTube, what would be the best option for their Ranger Raptor? And that all depends solely on what you're trying to do. Are you trying to level the vehicle? Are you trying to raise the vehicle up to fit 35 inch tires? Um, are you just looking for a bigger stance in general? Um, what's it gonna do to my Fox suspension and the internal bypasses and things like that? And it does take quite a bit of research to um, really figure this stuff out. But hopefully this will give you a roundabout idea of what would best suit for you. So if you're just going to level out the vehicle, the best thing to do... Sorry, the camera is super shaky. I don't have a tripod and I'm just using my phone as per usual because cameras are expensive. Um, you can just use like a, uh, a strut spacer from Snake Racing or something like that. They're about a 10 mil spacer but lift your car about an inch, I believe. And that uh, sort of helps level out the vehicle and just makes it look a little bit better. Also helps um, fit a little bit bigger tire. That way you're not rubbing on your uh, mud flaps and not and whatnot. And um, but I'm going to go with coils because I want uh, to be able to carry a lot more weight in the front and the rear. So I've gone with a King Spring KFFR dash one two zero H. H is for the um, heavy which is a 50 to 100 kilogram. God, the camera really is shaky. Um, which just allows for um, when you get a bull bar and a winch and stuff like that, just so it carries that extra weight without sagging. Um, the other question is like, uh, how much does it raise and will it affect the shock's usability? Um, it raises at about 50 millimeters, so you're two inches. So still within your legal limit, and it still sits within the internal bypasses of your Fox shocks. I have spoken to the guys at King Springs and Petters and Dobbinson's. I don't think Dobbinson's ones are out yet that are raised. They're still doing only factory height, but um, they say that it still sits within the internal bypass. So your shocks work as normal and uh, they do a linear rate for the front and I think a progressive for the rear. I'll have to double check. My rears aren't actually here. I'm not installing them today. I just wanted to do a quick video to see um, how level it makes the vehicle and if that's a good option, if that's all you're trying to do. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, jump into the installation and I'll show you guys how. Now that we've got everything nice and secure with the jack stands and the jack as an extra form of security so this thing doesn't fall on my head or fall on the ground and hurt my lovely uh, brake rotors. So if we look at the shot, we've got these three bolts up here. Those will be the three bolts holding the top um, strut plate in position. And then you've got that one large bolt down there that we should have to pull out. Hopefully I can, once I pull that bottom, bar, uh, bottom bolt out, I can just drop the shock down and then pull it out without having to undo this top ball joint. Hopefully, um, it usually never goes to plan like that, so we might have to remove this top ball joint. And if it comes to that, I'll show you how to do it, but hopefully that should all just come apart as one piece.
that bottom bolt is so annoying. Uh, in case you were wondering, the bottom bolt I think is about a 27 millimeter. The tops I believe were 14, let me double check. Yeah, 15 for the top bolts, but you're gonna have to use like a, a spanner or if you're lucky, a ratchet spanner to get the two in the back. And what else, the nut for the uh, upper control arm is a 21. And as you probably saw in the video, all you do is put a bit of pressure and then you smack the side with a hammer and it usually releases from that tapered fitting. It may take a few strokes, but it gets it done and it's better than ruining your rubber boot with a ball joint separator. And finally, Oh yes, the little bolt holding the speed sensor on is a eight, uh, eight mil. So make sure you've got that one undone, unlike what I did. Uh, thankfully, I checked the wire. There's no breaks, there's no separations in between it. Basically, the only tension it has was the spring tension from that. So it was very minimal, but uh, yeah, don't do what I did and just make sure you undo that so it sits loose and doesn't have any tension on it. So now we're going to use our coil compressors. These are a must. Don't just undo the nut on top because everything will go flying everywhere and you'll lose your angles. So we tighten those on, compress the coil, undo that top nut and uh, put the new coil on and put it back in. Fun. It's too hot to do this. So those are off and you can see how good those spring compressors work. Just make sure to every now and again switch from side to side, go about inch by inch by inch. That way you don't actually bend the rods because as soon as you bend that thread and it won't move anymore, suddenly you're in a lot of strife because you've got to grind it off and you're grinding something that's under tension and that can be incredibly dangerous. So if we look at these two springs side by side, they're much of a muchness, there's a lot more coils in the uh, 120s and it's a bit thicker as well. So that's the 50 to 100 and a good linear rate. And you can see it's just a little bit taller. Obviously it'll sag after a bit and it'll give you that nice 50 mil lift. So let's not waste any more time and let's chuck it onto the coil and back in the car and then finish up the other side. Before I hear anything in the comments, everything is torqued to spec on the other side. I just couldn't film it because my battery died, but I'll run you through it right now. That one there is 45 foot pounds, 30 foot pounds, uh, 159 pound inches, uh, 85 foot pounds. 258 foot-pounds for that bottom bolt down there. So if 
you don't have a torque wrench, probably double check everything and probably buy one. They're a good investment. And finally, these are 90 to 100 foot pounds. So that's pretty much going to be it for the installation of the front coils. I know it looks like it's riding a bit high now, but I mean, they're fresh coils, they will settle down. Probably will drop about another inch or so um, before the end of the week. It just needs to actually rest and actually like start to compress and get worn in a little bit. Um, one thing to note when you are doing suspension lifts, especially in an independent suspension system, like the Rangers and Raptors and most modern utes are um, you have to go and get a wheel alignment it is an absolute necessity because once you raise it obviously you're going to change your camber it's going to go into a negative camber so it's going to tuck the top of the wheel in and it's also going to tow in because you're, now your tie rods that they've dropped down they become shorter so it toes in the wheels um, it's not too severe on this car at the moment hence while i'll probably wait a couple of days before I book it in just so that the shocks settle and I don't have to rebook it in another three days after that once the, sh um, the suspension settled to get it redone again um, if you are going to do it yourself be prepared it is quite difficult you need some heavy-duty tools especially for that um, lower bolt and um, obviously uh, for your spring compressors and stuff like that because the springs are really really heavy and it's going to take a while to actually compress those down to get the top nut back on um, now i'm going to let this sit for an hour uh, maybe go for another quick drive up and down uh, my street and then i'm going to double check all the bolts and make sure they're all still torqued to spec and all still hunky dory so i do do that if you guys are in the comment section about to light up your fingers going like oh he didn't do this i do do that I just don't put it all on camera because I don't feel it's necessary, but it's necessary for me to tell you to always double check your bolts. Until then, I'll catch you next time when we do the rear suspension.